Thank you so much, Sharks, and welcome to LOL Park once again. I'm Atlas, joined by Wolf and Chronicler here for the first four games of the day. And uh, I had I had a lot prepared, gentlemen, uh, for Hama Life. I was about to say things like, yeah, but the draft wasn't so good in that game and all this sort of stuff. But it's they're against RNG. And as we heard, spoken about on the desk, this is going to be one heck of a task. It certainly is. Uh, I think this is going to be uh, the toughest opponent Hana Life has faced thus far. And RNG obviously have taken a 2-0 lead. A little bit predictable in terms of their drafting. Two of their players have played the same champion twice in a row. We haven't seen a whole lot of that this world so far. So I'm looking forward to see if RNG uh, will add some more diversity going into this best of one. Yeah, and we're straight into the draft as well. The Yumi, thankfully, has been banned away. Chronicler? We can have fun this game, which I personally <laughs> really appreciate. Um, Yumi, to me, felt very similar to what we saw at the beginning of the year. It was, oh, ooh dear, that's cool. <laughs> and then after about a week, we were like, wait, is this going to remain relevant? And now Yumi has basically become a permanent first pick. Obviously, the main interesting thing is that it is banned on blue side, whereas a lot of teams have just left it open, made sure that their opponent banned it or first picked themselves. But as the desk already mentioned, I think for RNG this makes a lot of sense, as they are probably going to look to put Ming on something in which he can impact the map and impact the team fights a lot more. Well, we don't even need to worry about the Jarvan problem either, um, whether it's teams picking him or um, picking it into them. Uh, because, of course, RNG have played the Jarvan to pretty great effect in their very first game, but he hasn't necessarily been the high-impact early game jungler that we were expecting. What's really standing out to me in this draft so far is that they take away the Aurelia instead of the Camille here, which isn't a champion that Morgan usually prioritizes first early on in the draft. So. This means that that's probably going to go through because we will see RNG almost no doubt take one of the high priority AD carries, whichever one Hana Life Esports leaves open, either the Lucian or, okay, they're going to leave both open so they can counter pick. But this means Hana Life Esports might be able to get something like the Lucian and that Camille themselves, uh, or vice versa, they could end up getting the Camille and the Misfortune. Yeah, and let's see what uh, RNG are going to first pick. There are loads of different options. Lee Sin, uh, certainly worth first picking. Leona is available. So many different choices. But I think Lee does sort of stand out, especially when Wei has been playing so well. It's not only been Wei playing it incredibly well, but also Wheeler, to me, has looked the most comfortable this tournament on the Lee by far. As was earlier pointed out, he is essential to actually getting some action going. Yes, we can look at the lane stats for Chovy, that's great, but that in of <laughs> itself isn't going to win you the game, which I don't have to tell to you guys because we've been looking, looking yeah. at it all summer. Uh, and I Ooh. like the Viego. I think Viego has really dropped in priority, but we're slowly starting to see him come up a little bit more. And a comp that forces Hama to go for early skirmishes, I think, is good. I want him to see them make plays. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Now, there's the Camille I was talking about that's going to come through here. This is what we saw Hana Life Esports have so much success with in that gauntlet leading up to the World's Qualifier. Yeah, and it wasn't necessarily success for the Camille either. It was just picked, and in the score sheet at the end of the game, someone played Camille. However, the Camille didn't necessarily do super well in lane. So let's see whether Xiaohu, Xiaohu can effectively punish Morgan as well, because we know just how dangerous he is as Lucian. Speaking of uh, Xiaohu, gonna get hovered, but there is the twist of fate for the yeah. third time in a row for crying. And I was actually uh, wondering why the Rise came out instead of the Twisted Fate ban that I think maybe should have happened at some point. I agree. I don't think you should keep giving RNG the same champions because Wolf already mentioned RNG, you know, that they're kind of sticking to their guns. If you keep winning, I, I personally don't mind it as much. And the TF also domestically has been heavily targeted because Cryin is not necessarily the strongest of laner. He's up against arguably the strongest of laners. And the TF kind of allows him to just take the laning phase as is and impact the rest of the map. Now, I am very happy that we get to see the Silas pick here because it is an incredible pick for Chovy and a pick that he actually makes plays on the map. Yeah, and you need to have this pick to be able to match those Twisted Fate rotations in terms of controlling the top side of the map. But already we have a draft for both these teams. It's extremely tempo focused. You can get a really nice early game lead if you can take that first Herald, if you can get a few kills early on. 
And you need that Silas pick here. It's 100% going to be banned in the second phase if you don't pick it up right now. But you've given over away his Twisted Fate. You can, you know, really only remove one of the Rise or the Twisted Fate realistically here. Let's see what the top counter pick is going to be for Shalhoub, because I think that is really going to give us a lot of information here. Yeah, unless they're just going to flex the, the Lucian up there, which could uh, they could theoretically oh. do. I don't know whether you want to play it into Camille all that much, as there's the Misfortune taken away from Deft. Of course, Deft, pretty high win, win rate on that champion of all time, and certainly very good in the meta at the moment. And there is the Jace taken away from Shadow. So, uh, Hummel Life not thinking that uh, that Lucian is going towards the top lane, which we haven't seen, and of course, after the change, doesn't fit into a solo lane all that well. And it is something that as Hanwha you kind of need to keep into account because Zhao Hu uh, is one of the strongest top laners, not just in this group, but I'd say in the entire tournament. RNG have shown how well they play around him. And <laughs> Morgan is just, if you look at individual players, clearly the player that has been the biggest problem. I really like this pick, and if we get it. That would be something that I can hear Atlas already gasping <gasps> besides me. Um, but this is... I think really cool because it still allows you flexibility. There is the chance to go for something completely off the wall if you want to, but you still get the Leona pick that has had very great effect in his Fred Worlds thus far. My concern with something like this Aphelios pick here is that you don't have a very strong front line as RNG against a composition that has insane engage. If you're going to flex this Lucian into a solo lane, you end up picking the Aphelios for Gala on the bottom side. You've got to deal with that Viego. You've got to deal with the Camille engage, the Silas, the... the uh, Leona here, so I like this set pick a lot more here. Leave the Lucian to the bottom side of the map, let him try to get a tempo advantage there. But if you're putting yourself into that fragile of a composition against what Hana Life Esports is running, you could get punished so easily. Yeah, let's uh, let's see where the Ming plays the set as support, which uh, we probably wouldn't necessarily like, as that is Ziggs being picked up. That could be in the top lane, that could be Gala being, uh, playing it, that could be... Uh... Yeah, in a couple of places, considering the fact that it's yeah. RNG. So we'll leave things uh, unconfirmed uh, for this particular pick, and let's see what Harmo Life Esports make of it. And it's a testament to the power of RNG, uh, having already picked up the Syndra mid, that we should know what this is. <laughs> yeah, this is but we really <laughs> don't. Yeah, we really <laughs> I think that's, that's, that's incredible, because... <laughs> I think it's it, it it bottom lane, right? Like, I, like I assume. Well, well, yeah. Seems. You, right. You'd assume so, but we don't know uh, until we actually get in game, and that is something that Daft has already played a lot. I, not the biggest Kaiser fan, but in this comp, I think it does fit very well. I, yep. I really like the Kaiser because I, I think what they were looking for potentially was super late game scaling, right, with this composition that already has a great frontline, already does well in the early game. But I like going all in on this composition, given that it is going to be the solo lane, Lucian. Again, assuming that this isn't going to be flipped at the last <laughs> second here. This composition is fragile. Yes, you can uh, run into problems against this set, but when you do engage past the set with this Kaiser, you have a lot more blow up potential. You can get one of these squishy targets like the TF, the Lucian, or the Ziggs. I like that there is that flexibility, though, for RNG. It just shows that they have, like, this extra, extra thing that you have to think about. Always, like any pick, could be going to Xiaohu, as it turns out. I remember when this guy first started, he was the Emperor of Shirima, right? He played Zerath and he played Azir. This was, I think, 2015, so he's come a long way since then. But now, he actually just plays every champion that exists and in any lane, ever. It's just, it must be so frustrating uh, to draft into. But Hummer Life, they've done a decent job, focused on just themselves. They are very, very short range, and they have to try and dive onto this composition. And the mobility for RNG in the mid game is going to be so scary. And gentlemen, I'm not sure whether Harmer Life Esports have shown that they're coordinated enough to deal with it. I don't think they should be, but I have doubted Chovy on Silas before. And this is the one pick where I know he actually does stuff. <laughs> We've been just a little bit frustrated, me personally, by seeing the Azir get a lead and do nothing with it. But with Silas, I don't think it's happening. Well, I mean, look, I look at this composition. I'm very excited to get into this game. And I think that one of the real strengths that Hanwha Life Esports comp has over RNG, if they don't fall behind, if they don't make major mistakes, which you can never be sure, is that ability to side lane so extremely well. So that's something that, yes, RNG can do this, but they won't be able to do it necessarily as effectively, as we're gonna have a big group up here on the top side of the map. Yeah, looks like Hama Life Esports have uh, gone into the fridge, collected some cheese, but not going to be uh, taking any of that bait as RNG. Shahu just chilling out in the brush, but uh, sometimes you just gotta go for it. You miss every shot you don't take, gentlemen. Yeah, it's been very common to see this uh, attempted in the top side of the map. The success rate has been very low, but the risk is 
zero, you get a ward up there, and Hanalei Esports don't really lose anything from this. And if we look at these comps as a whole, I think there's going to be a really interesting dynamic come mid-game where RNG have a range advantage and actually side laning for Hanwha is going to be somewhat stifled if Kryon doesn't fall very far behind. Because the Twisted Fade means that if you ever get into a scenario where it's just Morgan with two free items in a lane, he's still going to have to be very aware of where uh, Kryon is at all times. And Gala also has a teleport available, so that kind of makes it even worse. But then if RNG at any point missed that with a composition with a TF, a Ziggs, and a Lucian, and Hanwha Life, they have plenty of engaged. They can get blown up in seconds. Yeah, they also have Viego, right? So yep. if they manage to make picks work, then it snowballs so incredibly effectively. Yeah, every and, single yeah. fight you take as RNG in those side lanes, you better be ready to win it, because if it goes <laughs> even yeah. slightly poorly, the risk of even trying to punish a Camille on the sideline is just so high. Um, and that's why I think if RNG does fall behind early, Hana Life Esports will just be bold on the map. That's the assumption, right? We don't always get that from Hana Life Esports, but to try to really pull the trigger on getting that extra push is what they're going to be looking for. And what we saw RNG do exceptionally well, uh, as we get a little bit of trading here, was play around RNG, or play around Zhao, who read it when he played the Syndra. And I'm happy to see a similar thing here where we see way path towards the top side, and post six, Kryon can also cover. Morgan, that's yeah, that's that's the melee laner into Lucian experience right there. Yep, that's uh, Morgan chilling in the brush, hoping that uh, the Lucian doesn't notice him, uh, which is the the laning tactic, which you know I uh, I kind of appreciate because this is not going to be fun. Uh, wouldn't have been fun um, regardless of what the nameplate said, right? This is Lucian into a melee champion, and it's not going to be a lot of fun for Morgan. But Morgan's as well, just not that great in the laning phase. His way is going to pay a visit to Willa, steals away the red buff, and is now chasing after the VA go already way putting the pressure on and crying mirroring him beautifully yeah this is something we saw Fnatic do obviously to Willer in the early game didn't have a happy ending for the European squad there but we know that Willer is the type of player who is very much about pretty standard pass doesn't often diverge from that as ways to gonna stick around uh, yeah. But anyway, back to the back to the point. We see a lot of junglers <laughs> trying to uh, <laughs> trying to actually mess with Willer's pathing because in the past he has been a player who's kind of messed up and, and gotten a little bit panicked at times when his pathing is disturbed. But I've been pretty proud of him for improving quite a bit over the course of this tournament. Expected him to be one of the big weaklings for Hanwha Life Esports, but was as pointed out by the desk, over 90% kill participation so far this tournament. A huge strong link for Hanwha, in fact. What I really like from RNG there, and it's something that we've seen Dumbmon do very well uh, in the rogue game, don't talk about post-15 minutes, but in the <laughs> yeah, early okay. game, which is if you have double prio in your lanes, actually utilizing it, right? Kryon was able to use the fact that he's playing into a melee matchup as a ranged character early on to get the shove, so Chovy shoved in. Then Zhao, as we've already pointed out, had a huge wave crashing into Morgan's turret. So there was nothing to do that for Willa, and RNG is a team that I, I'm always really happy to see them use these timing windows so well, because now you've already put Willa on the back foot, right? He's decently far behind. That experience is really going to hurt him. And that takes away any windows for Hanwha Life to maybe find a nice little skirmish with that Viego, with that Silas in the early game. Because again, post six, Kryon is going to have such an easier time to have an impact on this map. Yeah. And as you can see, this wave going to get shoved in by Gala on the bottom side. Vista, oh, not quite in range. was deft there. And Vista is going to be able to use his charges up now. But Decent back timing there for Deft, trying to get back to this lane and only misses the cannon, so not too bad as Brian's now in trouble, down to 200 health as Chovy is looking for it. There's the Q, the flash, gonna come through from Kryon and Chovy not gonna use his. This is the, you know, you get the lopsided top matchup where Shahu is probably gonna dominate Morgan, right? He's gonna, he's got the range advantage and he's a player that just historically speaking is way the veteran. But then you look at Kryon and a lot of people think of him as one of the weaker laners for RNG. So Chovy gets to look to make the big plays. Getting a flash this early is fantastic for the Silas in this matchup. Yeah, a little bit greedy for Kryon as well because he, of course, hadn't teleported back to lane yet and was just overstaying yeah, maybe just a little bit as Will is going to come through, but Ming is in position, but Vista's here as well. Face Breaker is decent there for Ming, but First Blood's still going to go down over to Harmo Life and immediately it's answered as Chovy falls down. Ming now down to 300, not going to have another uh, Haymaker, and that is going to be another kill to come through from Willa, who was cosplaying his Twisted Fate. And now, still fighting, the flash forward from Wei takes a turn shot as Vista's looking for a Deft, turns up now as the stun comes in onto Gala. He's going to satchel his way out, and I think maybe that now the action's over.
Hopefully. Uh, I don't see anyone else <laughs> moving to the map. Brian didn't have ulti, or he would have joined there, I'm quite sure. <laughs> and I am both impressed with the fact that Hollow Life was able to read RNG so well, because I saw that roam up from Ming, and that is something that a lot of teams have had a difficulty with. Ming has been very good about his movement on the rest of the map, enabling the rest of his team, trying to find these angles. Uh, and in a 2v2, that probably would have worked out well, but it was three people that were ready for Hanwha. Exactly. Now you've given over so much gold over to Hanwha, you've given a free kill to a Kai'Sa, your double summoner's down on the Ziggs, so that r upcoming Rift Herald fight is going to be so much more difficult to stop. Now, as Chovy gets caught. Yeah, speaking of difficulties, Chovy just going to get burst down. Oh, Way no. picks up that kill, <laughs> almost evens things out, and that is, uh, it's, I mean, he got he got the destiny. Um, he might be able to come back to his lane a little bit easier, but now Way going to transition towards the top side, and Morgan, he's already out of here. But that is still bad news for him. Really well done by RNG, and it ties again. It's the same type of play. Get the prio. You you know where Chovy is. Chovy doesn't know where you are. And then uh, the moment that he doesn't have the ability of the Dragon's Rage, he just dies. Well, let's check out the new Axe Effect replay here as uh, this was an absolute cacophony, gentlemen. Yeah, it was definitely a very messy fight here, and you have to respect the power of Leona in these skirmishes in the early game. She's just so extremely tanky, so you just don't really... You're not actually a man up like you feel you are in some of these exchanges. The teleport commitment there as well on the Ziggs just doesn't end up working out. Willer's so incredibly low as he gets out, the way he goes, he goes down, and this is not a trade you want to be taking. It all stems from just one big overextension. You get pushed out of lane, you feel like, I gotta rush back in this crane, I gotta catch up, I don't want to get too outmatched by Chovy. You take that one step too far forward, get punished. The cool thing is that because of that play that Wei made, the lead that Hanwha had found for themselves basically immediately disappeared. Right, like now, uh, we're a little bit later in, we do see some of those CS leagues, especially in the bot lane, come to fruition. And we didn't really get the chance to talk about it yet, but the fact that Deft was able to pick up a kill there, thanks to that really nice roam, also shot out the bot wave, so missed basically nothing. Whereas Gala uh, did actually have to give up a fair amount of CS, uh, has now a lot of kill threats, and that is really bad for RNG, and it kind of keeps me place as Setting up a trap here. Yeah, Way now going to put down the ward so that he could safeguard out, and Morgan's actually going to be able to find the hook shot to kick back onto Willow to get him out of here, and now Morgan has to deal with three ways. Very low, but he's still alive for the moment as now Chovy going to use that stolen kick to try and get some work done, but immediately he's going to get taken down. It's a double kill now for Shahu as Will is desperately trying to find it, and there's the Heartbreaker finally coming in, and Kryon is now behind enemy lines. Ming's in trouble on the bottom side as well, but does get a double face break as Gala's trying to rain those bombs from over the wall. Deft doesn't have the ulti, but will have one more auto attack as he flashes on forward. The Q's going to be there as Solar Flare comes through from Vista. He's got 100 health, but he does not care, and the Ziggs will get taken down, and he's he unable lives. to answer. Oh, man, you could see him scratching his head there as well. You could feel the frustration coming through here, and I mean, Two big wins on the side of Hanwai Esports. They're outnumbered on the top side of the map, but it doesn't matter because you're dealing with a Silas and a Viego. And yes, Viego's heal got nerfed quite substantially over the last few patches, but he still is going to skirmish so incredibly well in these types of fights. You've got the extra healing there for Chovy early on in the game. It's not a fight you want to commit to as RNG. And the interesting thing is that looking at the topside play, I actually thought that was going to go very well for RNG. Because yeah, they were able too. to utilize the power that Kryon has on the Twisted Fade. Uh, and even though they saw Blue the... Uh, or they didn't know that there was Vision on way. He had Vision, so he knew Morgan was coming in. As this is how it happened. It's just a face Yep. Yeah, I think trying to be a part of the action, trying to maybe help out some of his teammates on the top side of the map. Uh, instead, that's fine by Vista and Deft, and then the level up here is about the most frustrating thing. <laughs> I can hear Veldes screaming <laughs> about how broken stopwatch is, because yep. that is an incredibly big turning point, because now Deft's guys are at any play if the Killer Instinct is available. If he joins the fight, RNG needs to be so careful. Well, they might need to be careful right now, as Kryon found himself in amongst five members of Life Esports, but does make his way out of there as the Rift Herald. Now down to about 3,000, RNG getting themselves into position. All five members of both teams are here, and Willa is going to be able to secure it. The eye not going to get taken, as there's the Mega Inferno Bomb really softening up the Harmer Life Esports members. And now RNG just going to zone Hanwha away from this eye. Shelly, 
just weren't participating in today's if, game, which makes me a little bit sad. Yeah, if Gala had his teleport, which it comes up like in a few seconds time, remember he used it in that mid skirmish. If he has that there, I mean, I think this is a really easy team fight win for RNG, especially with the damage they put up on the Morgan at the beginning of the fight. But by the time he gets there, unlike esports are already able to get that smite off and get out. They are able to take the Herald, not the eye, but still a big win here for Hanoi Life Esports in the early game that they wouldn't have necessarily had without that teleport being down, just now coming online. Yeah, I think it, like denying it might actually be very helpful uh, here for uh, Harm Life Esports because it means that Xiaohu can't smash down this turret very comfortably. There's now Willa. Speaking of Xiaohu, Xiaohu could be in trouble as Kryon's going to turn up. Willa immediately tries to ult his way out. There's the flash as well, and it is going to be Way that shuts down the Viego. But now Jovi comes on in there, finds himself the showstopper. Now he's underneath the turret. Wildcards will go wide, and it's a one for one in the end. And that's a big risk that you take as Hanwha Life, knowing that RNG, they like to play towards that top side. They like to play towards Xiaohu, and you see Willer is going for a play. Xiaohu just goes into the brush because he knows double reinforcement is coming. And fortunately for Chovy, you have the teleport available there. And you also see, if you don't immediately lock down and kill Xiaohu, the amount of damage that he's going to be able to output in these skirmishes is revolting. You need to make sure that if you go for a play like that, you are both fully at the ready. Yeah, it, it's so important too. The mobility he's going to now have with this Gale Force makes it so easy for him to actually stick around and make those fights happen in his favor. This is one of the reasons why you end up keeping the solution. Obviously, one of Xiaohu's most historical picks now on the top side of the map. We saw it dominate earlier in MSI. But this is why you keep this. Even though it makes your composition squishier, it gives you really nice power in the early game. And it's crazy to me that Hanwha Life Esports still near Nearly a thousand gold ahead in this game, despite the RNG draft. And that gives me hope there's a chance that this team can actually still pull through. You've seen Honda Life Esports with small leads like this before, and then they fall apart in the mid game. Yeah, speaking of mid game, though, I'm very scared because RNG can snowball so effectively with a comp like this, right? Like their ability to punish any sort of misstep. And then as soon as these champions get ahead, oftentimes they stay ahead, right? Like because you, you have Xiaohu in that side lane, Morgan's already getting doubled. Like, yeah. It's, it's not even close there towards the top side. And yes, he's 1-1-2. One, one, and two. It's not a bad scoreline, but as you can see, Wei continues to put pressure on, and Xiaohu's about to get yet another plate up here. It's a Gil Force against a Kindle Jam and a Sheen. And that's, that's, <laughs> not, that's not ideal. And, and we have seen Hanwha do this a lot, where you just sacrifice that top side. Will or Morgan has had gotten some attention. We see Vista coming up as well, but I don't know if that's enough. If it's in time. Yeah, can they actually get here is the question. Is Destiny's available for Chovy? He's stolen that one away is Morgan. Does look for the hook shot, but does not quite find it. They're just going to walk away with all of those plates now on the floor. RNG not going to bite off more than they can chew. Intelligent play here the Chinese squad. Deft going straight back to lane. Hanwha Life Esports not over committing to try to punish here either. It's actually really nice to see. You see oftentimes Hanwha Life Esports go fight or go broke. You know, they're not gonna, not gonna actually walk away from a lot of these skirmishes. They actually just send Deft back to the bottom side of the map where he has a huge advantage. He's got that Gale Force up. Already got his second item, uh, you know, about halfway complete here. So he's in such a nice position to continue to push that wave. And they still put the threat here on mid. On life esports, not getting huge advantages here in this neutral, but they are going to be able to keep that lead right now, not make any major mistakes. Yeah, and if if you were talking to me like four years ago, and you would and you said that Deft was three zero zero in a match versus RNG, I'd be like, yeah, of course he is, because. Four years ago, he was on EDG, and he was doing this to RNG all the time. And I find it so interesting that now, isolated there on that bottom side of the map, it's still happening. I don't know whether it's going to equate to the rest of the game, but I wanted to take you guys with me on my journey down memory lane because uh, it is just uh, it's, it's a fun history that Deft has uh, with the organization. And I think within the context of the year that Humble Ice uh, has added, it's actually interesting as Morgan is going to be able to talk shit away. Um, so that's, you know, good for him. But, but the, the issue is, as per usual, like, yeah, he, he lives, but that's going to be possibly first turret. All minions shoved into the wave. And I didn't get the chance to finish it earlier, but I think that Hanwha's often used strats of paying limited attention to Morgan. And in this game, I think it's not even been that bad. It doesn't work against RNG as the teleport comes in. Yeah, Morgan's coming back. Let's see what they can do here as Willa slinks into the mist. Vista's turning up as well. He's got the ultimate at the ready. His Deft is on the bottom side. Solar Flare will connect though. And there's the Everfrost as well. Hamalai piling on in. Kryon's already going to get taken down, but they're underneath the turret. And Trovi is immediately going to get taken down. Heartbreaker gets Willa out of there. 
In the end, it is just a one for one as both mid laners go down. Uh, Def just going to pick up the slack in the mid lane, but there's another one of these fights where if you are perfect with your engage as Hanalei Esports, you can take it. I was really worried we we're going to see a few of these moments before where we did see them back away. They didn't commit to the fight. This goes better than it could have. My concern here for Hanalei Life is, as you mentioned, they don't get the top turret. They, they don't pick up the Rift Herald. Yes, they slayed it, but they weren't able to actually get that extra traded back gold. And now plates are down. It's hard to pick up the slack. You can see that gold lead now going over to RNG. RNG also able to pick up the first turret but at the start of their play, meaning that they have now solidified that goal lead, as you pointed out. In addition to that, the strongest player on Hanwha Life side uh, uh, at the moment is Deft, and Deft was not able to join that fight at all, uh, was kept in lane by Gala. By the time he roamed up mid, the play was basically done, only able to shove out the way. Whereas RNG, as per usual, the person who is doing splendidly is Xiao Wu. Uh, we weren't sure if it was going to be a Lucian Flex. Turns out, the Lucian Flex worked very well. He is insanely far ahead, picked up multiple kills, uh, picked up all the turret plates, and also has a 60 CS lead. So any play that Hanwha Life tries to make where Xiao is involved and Deft is not, I think, unless you need to take it, you, you just, just don't? Yeah, and, uh, and then you can go back to what we were talking about, and RNG have so many tools to start fights whenever they want to as well. You press Destiny, you decide whether the players are on parts of the map that you want them to be, as there's a kick flash from Wei, finds himself to Q as well, as now Chovy. Yeah, I don't think Wei wants to fight him underneath the turret. Of course, Kingslayer is still pretty strong. He's Chovy's got the trying to get out of here, yeah. Showstopper's still available. There it is, as Chovy doesn't have that Kingslayer back available. Hanwha, they are looking for Shirley. They should be able to lock her down as Morgan's underneath this top outer turret. And I think the punishment might be enough here from Hanwha. Chovy's like, my Showstopper button isn't working. <laughs> it's not working. I thought I could just get a big shield there. Not going to happen. Not going to get away with it. Chovy is 0, 5, and 6, a very rare scoreline to see. Only 10 CS up because he's been matching his rotations in bad fights. As you mentioned, Chronicler, where RNG are at their strong, keeps getting picked off here, and it's not the Silas we normally see from him where you get that huge lead. You start to get those stacks on the Dark Seal you often picks up early. Not to be the case this game. And it's again the punish game from RNG, right? Way identifying that, Trophy, this is not your normal stuff. You're not fed. You can't not try to, like, try and play with me. Uh, goes deep, flashes, has the backup from the rest of his team, and that has also led to them getting that second turret. That is a more gold going to the people on RNG that are already the strongest. And I'm starting to feel like Hanwha Life, their uh, calls of when to fight this game still haven't been amazing. And as we get further and further into this game, I think it's one or two of those mistakes. You don't actually kill Xiao Hu, he's gonna solo the game. You don't take Gala once he's finished his second item, he's gonna be able to. With how that way is, even he right now is an insane threat. And RNG, outside of, you know, giving up a kill left to right, still feel to me like they're in third control of this game. Yep, I would 100% agree. Momo now just trying to pick up the pieces as we do have about a minute until Baron is on the map. Deft going to be taking this red buff as it looks like most of Hummel Life Esports just looking for a bit of a reset. You can see all of the vision available for RNG. They managed to deny that inner turret going down so they win yet another gold trade. And I feel like the longer this game is left with nothing happening, the more and more RNG is just building more money yes. than Hama Life Esports. It's like they've they've just got better investments. Like exactly. Their assets just continue to like get better and Hama's just just not. They, ha they have the stronger control of the map. They have the better economy that way. But also what I'm really worried about for Hama Life Esports is they didn't get enough of a lead to where they could feel threatening against these squishy targets like I was talking about before. Now you can just simply get stunned by the Twisted Fate and get blown up on your way in as one of these engaged champions as this looks like a very dead turret. And the other problem is that, yes, Gala got a little bit behind Deft, but he's still going to scale extremely well to help slowly set up these objective fights later on. You so desperately that Mountain Soul is Hanwha Life Esports. Well, this is going to flash away here. Willa in the mist right now, but RNG, they take the turret, and what did they invest? Uh, that was a culling and a Mega in front of it. And they'll be back up pretty soon. They got the locket too, Good you deal. know. <laughs> oh, there we go. And an ignite. And an ignite. Yeah, okay. okay. It, I, I'd still take it. I think if, if you're RNG picking up free gold all around the map, and we pointed out earlier how, yeah, Deft is the most fat member, but in what situation is this Kaisa actually going to be able to find value? That exactly. is, if you do find that fight, if you are able to get in short range, if you get that back lane dive, and those just, uh, okay, uh, have not really been happening as uh, that is...
That is one level above uh, you know, be, showing a cannon, yeah, getting yeah. missed. Wouldn't be, a, you know, the three of us up here casting at the LCK studio here in Lowell Park. There wasn't a cannon minion zoomed in on that was missed. And, I mean, that's quite significant well, when you're this far behind I, as Morgan. <laughs> you well, need that yeah, money. I think that, you know, the, just randomly using your flash in the sideline as a Camille that is supposed to have backline threat, generally not preferable. You know, oh, I thought it was the cannon we were focusing on. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realize the flash. <laughs> I'm just, I'm Sorry, just conditioned that's, that's here. For the setup. <laughs> I'm just conditioned um, here for good, the Oscar. Good campus. luck to getting onto Xiaohu now, right? And that, that if you don't do that, um, <laughs> it's just... <laughs> It's really hard, as Atlas says. I can't get past it. I, I can't get past it. Seeming like it was just a he missed the cannon grip, yeah. uh, replay, but <laughs> it's instead so to it. we were looking for the, uh, the the flash being blown. Is now way moving towards the top side of the map, and there is a trophy here once again. Zero and five right now. As Hamwa, they are counter pushing on the bottom side. They are going to be able to grab this turret. So trading up for the moment. But I just feel like in a game like this, where you get to have Ziggs in one of these lanes, soaking up all of the experience and gold, it's got to feel like you're on a clock for Harmal IP Sports. And yeah. I, and it looks like they want to try and force things, but they just don't really know where to force it, right? I mean, it's so difficult when a Twisted Fate can match any rotation you make so quickly. I mean, how do you actually try to make plays? How do you try to ever punish the Ziggs? You're, you're really one step behind in every situation. Not to mention the fact that if you have a slow neutral fight around this upcoming Baron or around this upcoming uh, Mountains Drake, which would be the first towards the soul, it's just so easy for RNG to wait, 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 counter engage, blow up the champions coming in, or just chip away with the Ziggs. Because Hanwha Life are the ones who are going to make a play. And I don't think it's all doom and gloom. If you look at the champions individually, they do skill quite well, right? Camille, once she hits a couple of items, can two tap anyone with Q. Yeah, Chovy is very far behind the curve, but as the game progresses, that will become less of a problem. Deft, self-explanatory on the Kai'Sa if he can find an angle. But the main issue for me is, and it's more with how RNG have played the tournament up to thus far, com uh, compared to what Hanwha has been able to do, is that, as you pointed out, Hanwha are the ones who need to make the play. The range advantage is there for RNG, uh, and if as Hanwha, you don't make a play, you lose, and if you play, you, you try to go for it doesn't work out, you also lose. So it's just a lot of a harder situation, and there are teams in the LCK that I think would be very comfortable doing that. But that's not been Hanwha's strong point. Um, so, as we pointed out, I think it's going to be a rough one. And we might see whether or not Hanwha can actually find a fight in about 20, 25 seconds as that Mountain Drake comes up. Yeah. They have no vision around so it, by the way. No. Yeah. So. Probably not going to go for too much here. Um, is it my? T should I? Uh, should I try huffing some trophy? And, I was gonna uh, say like when you. Because I can. I can list some things. <laughs> you know, if you want me to. When you. When, He's when, five at When Chronicler said. When <laughs> I'm Chronicler gonna need said, a lot. Okay. <laughs> when you said that. Oh, I gotta okay, leave time. Deft We're going is in. in trouble. There's the dash forward from Shahu. Immediately the ult comes out from Deft, and now the fight might be on. In goes Wave. It does get stunned down. Shahu with double buffs is very scary. Teleport to come through here as both Chovy and Morgan turn up, but that is both of the teleports. And RNG just say thank you and walk away. And they have so much control over the dragon now. They had vision control before this, and after this exchange, I mean, it's just free. Unlike Esports, don't even get the chance to take it. And yes, they are going to send Morgan to the top side of the map. Might be able to get that near turf. That's greedy. That's risky in itself. And what can you get here as Unlike Esports? You're just walking home with nothing. It's so cleanly baited from RNG as well. I don't even know if, it, if it's necessarily baited. They just woke up, realized that a teleport is invest, and they already kind of backed off as soon as the first teleport came in. I think that if Morgan, and this goes back to the team communication that has been an issue for Hanwha so often, was told, hold off, that they're backing off, you know, like uh, maybe you can get to the fight in time if you just look for the river because it was relatively close, you can keep those summoners. Now, uh, in a position where it's already hard for you to set up a possible threat in the side lane because of how far, uh, far behind your individual laners are behind Xiaohu, um, you also don't have the teleport to quickly respond around the map. And that's probably going to lead to a lot of inactivity from Humble Life. Fourthly, we're LCK casters, so we, we know our way around the game with uh, a little bit less activity. Are you talking about the wall state? <laughs> I might. <laughs> oh. Well, it's not happening. Because this is going to get tagged up. Now going to flash on forward. Finds the Zenith Blade into the back line. It's now Morgan dives on in. Crying's in a bit of trouble. Is now Ming. Finds himself on the front line. Mega Inferno Bomb. Not a lot of value, but the Camille will still fall. And RNG, they find their pick. And Hanwha Life Esports unable to continue forward. I mean, you, you've you've closed the gap for Hanwha Life Esports in this fight. You've walked into them. You were just saying, I'm going to straight up go into this fight where there's a, you know, enemy engage on the other side with the Leona, with a Chovy on the Silas, with a Viego. 
And they still win the fights for me. They still are able to get that calling over the wall. So much value here in this skirmish that is a fight that Hunter Life Esports would be, they'd be dying to take a fight like this, but they're just so far behind at this point, they don't even get a piece of the action. The one upside for Hanwha here is that RNG, unless they are going to go hard on this Baron, which I don't think they need to, um, didn't get that much out of this fight besides the one kill, and they did invest the flash on uh, Gala as well as the teleport on Joe. And I don't know if that in of itself is going to be enough, but considering that no further objective was picked up, um, that might provide a window for Hanwha and we get towards the Mount Drake's Vista. Yeah, immediately the Destiny comes through. Four members of RNG here, though, and I have a feeling that even though the Leona's pretty tanky, she is still going to die, and indeed she does. Now RNG thinking about possibly going for this Baron. They could all just blast her in their way over. There's a satchel available for Gala, so it wasn't necessarily left behind, as there's the Void Seeker finds out What's going on here? Four versus five here. Unless Armor Life Esports can enlist Baron onto their team. Already doing a fair bit of work for them here. There's Wei down to about half health, but he's looking to back off. And RNG not going to overextend onto the Baron. We're just testing the waters. Hanwha will figure them out. Uh, uh, RNG is a comp. Hold that thought. Okay, next we'll move on. Just to deny this push into the mid lane. Hanwha's still going to be able to take this one down, but RNG, they do not like it. And now Ming running pretty quickly. It isn't going to be able to find any face breakers or anything onto Hanwa, who are trying to slink their way out of this one. Another back massage comes through from Xiao, who is deft, is going to be able to dash his way out. But Vista has found his way back into the fight immediately. Hanwa trying to dive on forward, and it is Xiao who that's taken down. The high priority target is out of the fight, and Chovy somehow survives for the first time in this game. And that was beautifully done by Deft. Uh, as low as he got, he was able to reposition himself that with the Killer Instinct. Uh, but again, it's, it's a really nice fight, but I don't think anything is going to come from it because they won't be able to pick up any objective. Drake isn't spawning yet. There's no angle for Baron. So the careful balance that we've had in this game thus far, still not being disturbed. And not only do they not gain anything from this, they're going to lose a little bit of vision control on the Baron pit. They're going to have to regroup and set up for that. But for RNG, I think part of the reason why they haven't been able to actually take this out is because their composition doesn't do well on top of a Baron on turns. If they're the ones approaching the Baron or if they have full vision control around where Willer stands right now, their, their red buff, you can slowly chip away at Hanwha Life Esports and force them to take a bad engage over the Baron. But if you're starting it up, Hanwha Life Esports are all alive. Very, very risky fight for RNG to take. So that's why the game has kind of slowed down a little bit here. That lull state we were getting into right before that Baron exchange is where we sit right now. And this is pretty good for champions like the Kai'Sa that are going to start to get a little bit better on, but you're still dealing with the Ziggs that's scaling up here. This is what's scary for me is that RNG in those slower fights is going to be so strong. Yeah, it's so hard playing a dive comp into a Ziggs as well as Wei. Taking a fair bit of damage here. There's a Destiny from Brian, though, to immediately come through and save the day. Mega in front of him. Speaking of which, that is just going to obliterate Vista. And there's the kick flash onto Morgan. He's going to die as an afterthought as Willa going to flash his way out. Wei immediately following, though, had that resonating strike already coming through. And now Willa has to try and get out. Doesn't have flash or heartbreaker, but RNG not going to be able to catch up to him. They'll have to just settle for two kills, and seems pretty good to me. And that's a familiar sight for Hanwha Life fans. Chovy's off in the side and does have teleport, but because the play is basically already lost by the point that it would be, uh, there would be a possible window, Hanwha Life gave up two free kills and gave up the second Drake. Now, because the Drake take pace in this game has been fairly low, uh, we don't even have a team of a sword point yet, although RNG about to hit that now, which means that in five minutes, that Mountain Soul would be so good against the Hanwha Life composition, because a lot of their strength comes from isolate target with either Leona or Camille, blow up target, and get those resets going. Yeah. And once that becomes a lot harder with the, mount, uh, with the Mountain Soul resistances as well as the shield, uh, it becomes even harder for Hanwha Life. And there you see again, Hanwha Life sometimes hesitate, is this a good play to go for or not? But RNG, if they see an opportunity, they go in. Again, Wei going for a flash kick. And again, it works out beautifully. This is they're sneaking. Yeah. They've right. got that approach, approach composition. RNG is so good at fighting these types of fights if they get in there. Well, Q is going to connect. Mega Inferno Bomb. Not going to get too much done, but just gets Hanwha Life out of the pit. They do have to disengage. RNG were thinking about accepting the leash, but they do not. And this is what I was talking about. You know, this is the type of Baron fight that RNG want to take. They're like, oh, you're going to be on the Baron in that choke point. I absolutely want to toss those Ziggs bombs through. And I'm pretty sure that Hanwha Life could have gotten the Baron there, but then the question is, how much do RNG get, right? At because what if they cost? actually, Yeah, at what cost, exactly. And I don't mind that they, they play it a little bit safer, because if you do give up a couple of kills there, uh, RNG are going to shove mid and end the game. 
but still, uh, Hot Wallace still showing signs of life. Uh, RNG though, still the ones look at the vision lines, right? Look at the lack of side lane that Hot Wallace have been able to find. The fact that Grind didn't have the biggest early game impact, but still this Twisted Fate has been expertly used in setting up those side lanes, something RNG loved to do. And yeah, Xiao is at four items. Uh, yeah, and, it's, and, and you strong. call them back massages. I don't really know if that's, <laughs> yeah. if that's what they are anymore. I feel that's like what we're used to calling them. No, but, uh, no, it doesn't really, uh, it it doesn't really apply. Much, it does starting, it's starting to take away a lot of the health bars. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not very therapeutic, the massages that are coming <laughs> through here. Licensed? Maybe it's just not a very good massage. You know? It's <laughs> one of those massages you <laughs> yeah. go to and it's just like, it's just painful. And you walk out and you're like, well, actually, I'm not it doesn't have refreshed adjust whatsoever. It doesn't have the adjustability that you're looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or maybe it's one of those massage chairs. Yeah, I've I've sat in the one ball? of those, and they just hurt. Yeah, um, I, I, <laughs> I, mean, I don't understand them at all. Uh, it, it's just not a great. They make your so joints ache. But uh, RNG, trying to look for the engage here. Yep, Chovy going to use those chains to get himself out. Vista just soaking the Mega Inferno bomb. Some chains coming through here as now Vista dives on in. The teleport is channeled as Ming finds the engage, but there's no follow up here from RNG as Wei finally will find his way in there. But Dept is just free hitting from the back line. Wei could be in trouble. That is going to be a Q going to Narnia as now Brian running away. Does have some wild cards he's gonna throw out in Hanwha. They're just gonna grab a couple of picks and now look for a potential Baron. I mean, this is not the way you wanna fight with this team, team fight composition that RNG have. You're once again walking kind of base first into Hanwha Life Esports. That is where the composition is going to sell. Use your range advantage, poke at them, use that Ziggs. Don't just walk straight in. Now we're at a stage where Hanwha Life Esports can rush this Baron down so easily here, and they're gonna be the first ones to take it. And suddenly, this is anyone's game to take. And now, Hanwha Life needs to do two things. They need to pick up a lot of the standing gold on the map, take down those turrets. They haven't gotten a single tier two turret in those side lanes yet. And secondly, above all costs, this Baron needs to be used to side up vision in that bot side jungle. You cannot give over the Mountain Soul because that can really hurt you going further into the game. Yeah, yeah. and this should be a, a really big uh, Red Bull Baron power play as well. As you mentioned, there are those uh, turrets to be taken. But let's have a look at this one once again. Mega Inferno Bomb soaked by just the Leona, which yeah. is actually I mean, that's that's a big engaged tool. It doesn't necessarily even have to be an engaged tool used here for RNG before the fight even begins. So you've lost so much of your execution damage. You're not going to be able to finish off these weakened targets now. And look at where Morgan is in this fight. He's able to zone away Xiaohu here. He's not able to do that full consistent damage. And Toby, in these types of scenarios, is very happy to shove you away. And you see a lot of the damage. We talk about the back massager. This time, it doesn't actually find anyone, right? Goes into a cannon initially. Crying doesn't have the opportunity to join Ming, who went in very deep there. But then when Morgan showed up and spoiled the fight, like you pointed out, Wolf, there wasn't really an opportunity. And all my life, you know, they don't have the mu that much range. But if you do actually walk into their effective range, if that can get a couple of autos off, you blow up in seconds. Exactly. You saw that there. And now the push comes through it from RNG. Yeah, I love this because they've got a Ziggs. They can explode this turret so quickly. Hanwha, they've got empowered recalls, but it's not enough. The satchel charge just explodes it. The demolition man just wanders into the mid lane. Now Vista looking for a potential flank, but RNG already walking back towards this mountain drake morgan is going to rotate up here and try to cut them off the alternative option is to just continue to push he doesn't have teleport right now so he's not able to trap them and rng it looks like they're just gonna kind of get to go away with this for free because they don't end up losing that inhibitor turret and they could just walk up group up perfectly timed for this mountain morgan still has a flank angle here but he's spotted they know he's there they know he's there they saw him walk up the pings are already going down yeah the destiny comes on in there as death flies on forward looks for gala but he flashes himself out death goes golden now shahu is in trouble immediately the pylon comes on in. death gets over the wall is now willa trying to keep himself alive but he's not going to be able to chovi surviving in amongst four but that ain't gonna last for very long is now death looking to burst down the drake and he does does it? But can they actually survive in this game? I mean, I guess they managed to get a pick onto Xiao, who's a lot of the damage. But still, they're missing three members for another 30 seconds. And they actually do get that inhibitor turret, so permanent damage. That means there is an exposed inhibitor later on for Morgan to potentially take, for Chovy to potentially side lane and take. They still have the Baron buff here for a few more seconds to sort of stave the bleeding here off as they do survive. But this is the first of their Mountain Drakes. And by the way, if they end up getting a three Mountain Drake, Mountain Soul, it's so good into the Ziggs. Chovy Life Esports has disconnect. This is Death Life Esports, oh, okay? Yeah. <laughs> again, uh, we see that Morgan was spotted there. Really good read by RNG. They were aware that he's there, so they collapse onto him. But we see another situation in which the fact that the fight is kind of dragged about, like it's, it's 
multiple tiny skirmishes happening all over the place, allows Death to go in, do as much damage as he possibly can, flash out over the wall to not get taken down there. Despite all that, Choki somehow did more damage, so I... I, I he was the one actually fighting people, though. I mean, yeah, Death was true. fighting a dragon. Yeah, um, throughout <laughs> and a most bomb. of it. Yeah, which, have you know. which, which, you know, in, in, a, in a, a, a fantasy TV series, that would be really <laughs> cool. However, in a game like this, you know, he's, he's not necessarily participating in the team fight, but denying that Mountain Soul is so incredibly important. Because now Willa just going to help clear out this wave. This Diego is actually pretty important for late game damage as well, and he's looking for that GA much like Morgan has. Morgan now with his, which is definitely good. Didn't have it in that last fight, can now buy even more time. He also has teleport, so he's gonna have a lot more options available to him now as a sign laning Camille. A big group up here unseen. Yeah, control ward goes down. Morgan now knows there are probably a fair few people here as uh, the vision from Hanwha Life hasn't been swept very effectively here from RNG. Yeah, so Hanwha knows exactly what's going on and now is setting up for a bit of a play for themselves. Carl is going to blast his way over as now Willa in that brush, in the mist. He should be all right. Chovy now slinking in from the bottom side. Can dash his way over as there's another Mega Inferno Bomb and Culling to come through to soften up the members of Hanwha. They are able to back themselves out, but the pressure is still there from RNG. And this time we see RNG do exactly what they need to. You saw Gala, one Q takes about a quarter away of the, uh, a quarter of the health bar away from Morgan. Here the same thing. If Xiao Hu throws a Colin, you don't actually need to go all in. You can play it slower, play it a little bit back. And with the amount of damage with the items you have right now, it's up to Hanwha again teleport to make a play. play. And they're going yeah. for it. Yeah, Morgan looking for that flanking teleport. Who's he going to ulti as Vista flashes, grabs the Solar Flare, and in comes immediately out of nowhere Morgan. And he's going to be able to go down to his GA, keeps himself alive. That is two kills now for Chovy. Can he save this KDA is the real question. As now Hanwha chasing after the remaining three members of RNG, Vista not quite sure which way he wants to go and Deft isn't going to be able to catch up. So they are going to be able to leave Cryan, Wei and Xiao uh, to get themselves out. Such a great engage though. They have the flank teleport there. Morgan finally able to make a big impact. Gets the engage there. You see the targeted bomb coming through from Chovy. They blow up the majority of the damage here. Unfortunately, timing wise, this has happened multiple times here for Honda Life Esports. There's no big objective to take just yet. Baron is spawning in 10, but it's not a realistic one to take. That really important mountain drake that they so desperately need also far away. But seeing them stave the bleeding, deal with this top pressure is so incredible. Now watch the teleport angle here. They know exactly what target they want. Chovy's gonna go for the steal, and they just instantly remove the Ziggs from the map. And with other Ziggs available, you're missing out a lot of the damage. And even with the health bus being a little bit low on, for example, this time death, doesn't really matter as long as you get in and blow up the one target. Exactly. So reset, uh, reset start coming through. But I do agree with you, Wolf. Yes, that was a good fight. Happy for Hanwha that they were able to pull it off, but you don't have a GA on Morgan anymore. He doesn't have the teleport, so flanking is going to be a lot harder. And it feels like this has been a recurring theme this game, mostly for Hanwha to a lesser extent for RNG, where a good fight in of itself hasn't really led to a breakpoint of objectives. Yeah, Hanwha got the Baron, and then the power play was like 1500 gold because RNG was actually the one pushing in, but now Hanwha going for the Baron again. If at first you don't succeed, get another Baron, I think is the is the, the call here as Hanwha Life have started off. It goes down extraordinarily quickly. Oh, it's so, so much damage. It's at 3000 health and RNG aren't going to be able to take it. That's going to be secured by Depth of all people. A great face break of a Ming. Again, no follow up whatsoever as now Xiao Hu gets himself in there. Going to be able to grab the Camille who didn't have that GA as you knew. And Wei now finding that pick off. As uh, it's unfortunately the Viego that is going to go down. No resets this time around as the chains are flying around. But it's always a numbers advantage here for RNG. And Trophy once again going to get taken down. Def the lone survivor here. Defending this is going to be so frustrating to try to do. And I got to say, RNG once again engaging into Hanwha Life Esports, closing the gap first. But the face breaker is actually what makes it okay this time. And now Deft, it's going to take a lot more than heroics, I think, to defend this base. Yeah, he needs to kill all the minions. Otherwise, it should be RNG just being able to push on forward. There's 20 seconds on the next member of Hamwa Life East of, uh, yeah, Hamwa to actually come up as Deft goes into the supercharger. But there's the exhaust. 
goes down to his GA. I guess it's not quite over just yet, but he's in amongst four, and that is going to be that RNG. They pull Hummel Life apart, they give them a Baron, and then take their Nexus and say, that's a pretty good trade. And by the end of the game, it is the RNG team fighting that pulls them through above all. Clearly, the call from Hawa Life in the previous situation to give up that Baron, pull back, and make sure that they don't fight on RNG's uh, call was the right one because this time they think we can finish it and maybe get out. The resets don't come through. Hanwha Life look disjointed and are unable to do anything with the Baron buff. Baron for Nexus, I'm going to say, it's yeah. not worth. I, I, I will say too, doing this against a stronger team, you do this against one of your fellow LPL teams or against Dom One Kia, you'll probably get punished. This won't work against every team, but against a team like Honda Life Esports that is oftentimes in moments like this, these high pressure situations, a little bit disjointed, ends up working out for RNG. Didn't play to their win conditions, their range advantage always, but when they did, they looked strong. And when they didn't, they were still able to smash through. Uh, I mean, they really put a square peg into a round hole in a lot of those team fights, but it was good enough because the coordination was so strong. Ming's face breaker there, beautiful in that second to last fight. And on white esports, looking better than I expected here in this game. But now, RNG, perfect first round robin here, three and zero, setting the stage to get out of this group in first. That's the expectation after tonight. Yep, the MSI champions looking absolutely fantastic right now. And man, Hummer Life, it almost looked like they were going to be able to make it happen, but they unfortunately were not able to. But while we get ready to see the Mad Lions take on LNG in game two of the day, we're going to hear what it's like inside the mind of madness in Bose Sounds of the Game. Look, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. They're going on my heart, they're going on my heart. I think we win this, I think. We win this, we win this, we win this. We win this, we win this. I'm behind them, I'm behind them. Wait for the bank, wait for the bank. Kalista is hitting hard, Kalista is hitting hard. I'm on Kalista. You win this, you win this, you win this. You win this, you win this, you win this, you win this, you win this for sure, okay? Oh my god. Look at Kalista, she has J, she has J, she has J. Yeah, yeah, I'm chasing him. Yeah, yeah, Baku, 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 yeah, yeah. Oh, now it's Lucia. You win, he's 1 HP, 1 HP, 1 HP. Uh, can she can keep chasing both. Grace, maybe? Okay, yeah. you, you can, can push both, you can push both. Just push both, just push both, Armut, Armut, just push both. No, 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 no. Kalista can hold back, Kalista can hold back. But guys, why are you not... What are you doing? Bro. Just chasing Grace. What? Not letting him base. It's fine, I'm both ways are fine, I think. But we could... Oh, man, okay. Okay, it's fine. I'm, I, I, I can just poke them. I'm just poke them. I'm gonna... I'm probably gonna ult, okay? I'm gonna ult, I'm gonna ult, I'm gonna ult, I'm gonna ult, I'm going. Look at them. I'm diving, I'm diving. Care, care, care. Okay, that's... Okay, look at Kalista. Oh. Okay, can, can, can. Okay, okay, nice. Oh what is this fight? No, I don't know, not... <laughs> What is this brutal fight? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
And welcome back to Iceland for Walls 2021 group stage. RNG are now 3-0 and in their group. And Ming, thank you so much for joining me for this interview. There was a lot of back and forth this game. What would you identify as the mistakes that could have cost you the game? Uh,首先恭喜你们这一轮已经拿下三比零了嘛,但是这场比赛其实打得非常有来有回,那你可以跟我们讲一下这场比赛是出了哪一些问题导致你们有可能会输掉比赛吗?嗯,就可能自己集